Good morning, Own Rev family, and thanks for joining us for the Monday Morning Devotion, brought to you by Own Your Health Revolution. I'm Dr. Holland Meyer, along with my co-host, Gloria Strait, and we do this every Monday morning at 713 Central Standard Time. It's about a 10 to 20 minute devotional to start your week off with Jesus. And remember, how you start your day is how you rule your day. So today we're going to go over um, going all in. So what does that really mean? I had to really sit back and think about this because I th- feel like I've had more of like time periods of going all in. So have you ever been all in with your diet or all in with certain relationships? Have you ever been all in with your career or your business? And mo- most importantly, have you ever been all in with your relationship with Christ? And if we're, I would I would have to say that if we're all to be honest, I think we can say that we've been all in at some point, then fell off the wagon, then gave 80%. And in some relationships may have even figured that others were happy with you giving 85%. So we settled as well. This is common with relationships and even with your career and your business. I found that when we have, or actually I've found that we have a different definition of going all in and what that really means. Some of my colleagues think that they're going all in with their business 100% of the time, and maybe they do. I know that I find it difficult to go all in with almost anything 100% of the time. I tend to go on 90-day runs and then take a little break and then do another 90-day run, or uh, sometimes it's 30 days. If I go all in on something, I'm certain and I'm prepared that something else in my life will begin to slip. I, I'm not much of a believer in having a balanced life, but having a counterbalanced life. Um, I feel like life is constantly about counterbalancing. Uh, I know, and, and I know that going all in, it does require sacrifice. Just for example, if I go all in on my business, I'm certain that I will give my husband less. And so we discuss where we can adjust to still win in life. So for example, um, a lot of times when I go all in with my business, it requires more travel than usual. Okay, and so with that being said, it does affect (laughs) what I can give my husband. And um, so, but if we go, even if I go all in, it typically doesn't last forever. I'm sure that many of you out there can also relate with going all in, whether it be a diet or going all in. Um, it it kind of goes like this. We go all in in the beginning, then we slip a little bit, then we slip a lot, then we tighten the reins again and we go all in at it again. And we tend to do better when we have an accountability partner uh, to get us back on track as well. So Over the weekend, I attended a new church, and I was really intrigued by the pastor's message. There are actually many different lessons within his sermon, but something that hit me was when we were, or when he was discussing giving our best to God. Giving our best to God does require sacrifice, and God desires our best and our attention 100% of the time, but as we go through life, it's easy to get complacent complacent in your job, doing just enough to get by, and nothing more than what is in the contract, nothing more than what's required. Is that the best you've got? Remember, you are a representation of God. Everything you do, commit to the Lord. Even the memo that you're typing up, even the floor that you're sweeping, and and know that even the little things you do is important to God. The things that people don't know or see you doing, it is important and you are valuable. So do it with all your heart. Listen, um, you, um, something that's helped me, the things that kind of are, are a little bit of a drag during the day, uh, sometimes listening to uplifting music while I'm doing it allows me to get my mindset right. Now, let's bring this back to the Bible and talk about Malachi. In his prophecy, he set uh, the love of God side by side with disgraceful worship of man. Okay, so we're talking about the love of God, which is perfect and beautiful, and it's so deep with uh, worship of man, how men were worshiping God in this, and how um, God was actually (laughs) felt disrespected by it. His uh, prophecy opens up in chapter one with 
I have loved you, says the Lord. In the next section, he accused the people of dishonoring him with disgraceful worship. The cynical people argued, saying, in what way have we despised your name? Malachi's charge was that they were giving God their leftovers. So what was happening um, is the priests were accepting things uh, like molded bread, and um, the animals that they were sacrificing were blind or crippled or diseased animals that they couldn't use elsewhere, okay? And instead of bringing their best, they were bringing their leftovers and offering them to God. The Lord evaluates such worship and sacrifices in this passage. And what he says here to, the Is- to Israel becomes a challenge, even to us today, giving our highest and giving our best to God. So let's bring that back to what I was talking about earlier about going all in. Are you going all in with your relationship to God? Some days I know that I am. In general, I would like to think that I am, but honestly, some days I forget to pray. Some days I'm jazzed about my business and I actually forget to stop and read the Bible first or praise him for all the things that are going on. The cool thing is that being all in with God is only an asset. You will always land on the positive side of the balance sheet. But it does require sacrifice and it does require setting your priorities right, like anything else that's worth doing. The super cool thing is that God will never fail you. Knowing that God will never fail you, I want you to think about something. Would you give him more of you knowing that he's got your life under 100% control? Are you giving him just the sad parts of your life, the tough parts of your life, the difficult parts of your life? Um, Are you giving him the great things in your life and the things that are going well also? Instead of giving him your complete attention for an hour on Sunday morning, Would you do this daily? Would you spend more time getting to know him if you knew that he could not fail you? Knowing that he gave you everything and it actually all belongs to him. Would you sweep your house with thanksgiving in your heart? Would you make that difficult phone call with a sense of trust and a different tone in your voice? My point is, would you give the tasks of your life 80% or 100% knowing that it is actually for God? When it comes to sacrifice, as my pastor said, he doesn't want your sick and busted lamb. He wants you to sacrifice your best lamb. And it's not to punish you, but to draw you closer to him and to learn to depend on God and trust in him completely. When we go all in for the Lord, life absolutely seems lighter. Um, Doesn't mean that it won't be difficult. It doesn't mean that it, uh, it won't be a difficult road. But it does seem lighter whenever you've got God, the master and creator of the universe, on your side and being that lamp into your feet and the light into your path. And so, sure, I'm not, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one that has only given parts of my life over to the Lord. And, and it's not on purpose, but my pastor's message really hit me and made me think, what are some of the areas in my life that I'm holding on to, that I'm holding back? Sometimes it's obvious, but many times it's not so obvious. And I want to challenge you to think, are there some areas in your life that you're holding back from God? Maybe you subconsciously think, I've got this one. We're going to do just fine. We're, we're doing just fine. Or, or um, I know I've learned that the more I'm all in for God, the more I learn to give to God. I challenge you to set aside some time to simply Talk to God about the areas of your life and pray over it and pray for God to reveal an area of your life that you need to hand over to him. The message at church also got me thinking, what are some of the areas in my life that I'm only giving partially to God? Here's where things can get tricky because we can say to ourselves that um, that we live a better Christian life than Mr. Smith across the street or I read the Bible more than Susie, or we tithe more than most, or I'm a good person. But the thing is that the degree in which you sacrifice is totally between you and God. We set, we, we get sideways when we start comparing ourselves, whether it be our sacrifices or our gifts or even our blessings with others. If you feel convicted that there's a certain area of your life that you aren't going all in with God, 
I mean, it could be your marriage. It could be other relationships, your career, your business, your finances, even your children. Pray over it. And me and Glow will be praying over you as well. And write it down and share with someone uh, you love and ask to be held accountable. Just continue to pray over that and try to release that in your heart and giving God control over the things that you hold so close to your heart um, that you find it difficult to give over to God 100%. And if you can't think of anything, sit for a bit and ask yourself and just ask God to reveal that to you and just sit down for a little bit and really just ponder over it and meditate over it, pray over it. Is there anything in your life that you would not be willing to give up and give God 100% if he literally asked? That's the thing to pray over. Not obsess over, but to pray to release that thing into God's hands. And sometimes it can even be a secret. Sometimes it can be something you're holding, uh, you're hiding from God because you're ashamed. But I want you to know that he loves you anyway. No matter what you did or what was done to you, no matter what happened, he already knows and he loves you regardless. And once you give it to him, he can start working on healing your heart, healing your mind, healing your body and your soul. Psalm 55, 22 says, give your burdens to the Lord and he will take care of you. And I want to wrap this up with, um, with, an enc with, with, with encouraging you to give your absolute best to God. Not your busted lamb, but your best lamb, okay? Go all in for God this time, for good this time as well. And have faith that it will be worth it. He is preparing a life for you that is far beyond anything that you could ever imagine. Okay, so now uh, thank you all for joining me. I do want to uh, close this out in prayer, if you wouldn't mind, and then I'll close this out completely. All right, join me in prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for going all in for us. You, you didn't hold anything back. You gave us everything you had, even your only son. Please help, help us to identify and please reveal the areas in our life that we're holding on tight to, that we are wanting control over. Help us realize in our hearts and even in our minds that when we give it over to you, that you are the creator of the universe. Certainly you can handle the small things and the big things in our lives and help us to realize that life works out a little bit better when we trust you. Not that it's going to be easy, but that it will be worth it. Dear God, please be with um, all the unspoken prayers that people have that are going through tough times, whether it be weather, whether it be sickness, whether it be um, anything in our lives and relationships. And those tough things, those blessings, those talents and gifts, help us to give it all over to you, God. And please forgive us for our sins and be with us as we, as we go throughout this day and this week and help us to just reflect on you as often as we can and include you in our daily decisions, even the small things that we decide and the big things we decide and help us to just spend more time with you. In Jesus' name I pray. All right, thanks to each of you for continuing to inspire us and playing such a major role in the own rev movement and our goal is to not only better ourselves but do that in order to further god's kingdom we do want to remind you that we do record these and post them on facebook and youtube and soundcloud so if this message touched you we'd love for you to share it with your friends and family and thanks for joining us and stay classy folks